Come on, let's hang out. Yeah, eat a bowl of fuck. <laughs> I am here to party. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. I like it spooky. Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of the I Like It Spooky Podcast. I'm Brian. I'm Jason. Hey guys, and I'm Clint. And I want to let you know I'm going to jump the gun right now and rate this movie that we're about to review. 10 nipple-flavored lipsticks out of 10. <laughs> That's it? <laughs> That's it. End the show. See where, you next week, guys. Where do you, where do you buy nipple-flavored lipstick? Is that an Avon? Avon. Quigley.com. Yeah. I want it so bad, I don't even know. It's just... Uh, my, my wit left me with that one. I can't tell you. <laughs> if you find out, let me know, though. I'll send it to you for Christmas after we cuddle it. Oh, yeah, flashback. Yeah. <laughs> First, let's check in with the news. <laughs> DreadCentral.com reports that the entire Freddy's Nightmares series is now streaming on Tubi. You heard that right. After years of being difficult to track down, Freddy's Nightmares has found a new streaming home on the free-to-watch Tubi. This means both seasons of the outrageous Freddy Krueger-hosted anthology series are available to watch right now without paying a cent. Freddy's Nightmares, sometimes known as A Nightmare on Elm Street, the series, it first aired in October of 1988 and ran for 44 episodes. It was hosted by Robert England as Krueger, who'd introduced each storyline in the style of the Crypt Keeper. Uh, it was produced by New Line, and the pilot episode was actually directed by Toby Hooper. That's pretty interesting. I've never seen any of the Freddy's Nightmare shows, or at least as far as I remember. So I'm excited to kind of check this out. I don't know why in my life I've never seen them. I don't know if I've seen every episode or not, but I remember this coming out when I was a kid, and I was excited, and I saw a lot of them. And the first one that was directed by Toby Hooper, it's um, it's basically an origin story of Fred Krueger before he gets burned. I mean, it doesn't go back to like him being a little kid or anything like that, but it basically picks up to where he's in court, you know, because they caught him messing with the kids and everything, and then he gets out on a technicality, and then that's when the townspeople go and burn him. So it kind of starts there, and then that leads you into Freddy's Day. Oh, way, way, cool. way better than the Friday the 13th series, which had nothing to do with Jason. That was all about the, the haunted objects or whatever. You know, The Friday the 13th one was the coolest show if it didn't have that name. If it had a different name, it would have been fantastic. And I'm kind of like you, Clint, with the whole Friday the 13th thing. If that was anything else, a monster series or a paranormal series or something like that, if they didn't have that name, it would have been so much better. Because you turn it on, you want to see Jason Voorhees or something along those lines, and you don't. You don't get any of him in the series. Right. I don't even know right. if they talk about him in the whole series. The Friday the 13th fan film, The Fall of Camp Blood, which is directed by Riley Lorden, uh, it had its premiere a couple weeks ago on Saturday, May 7th. And uh, it's been available on YouTube to watch since Friday the 13th in May. It stars Rose Blood director, another, another Friday the 13th fan film. Roseblood. It stars the director of that, Peter Anthony, as well as Brent Edgett and Anson Days. And Anson's actually going to be in a micro video project that I'm working on sometime this summer. Uh, Cletus goes to the movies. Awesome. Oh, yeah. I, ha I had to take that shot. Sorry to cut you off, Jason. Go ahead. No, no. Take that shot. I mean, and if we're talking about uh, independent horror films and independent, you know, horror films getting some budget, some money back, you know, uh, HorrorNews.net just announced with that uh, Marketing Macabre is now offering commercial spots on AXS TV, Reels, and HDNet movies. And this is huge for people that are independent, putting stuff out there. Um, it opens up a lot of doors for commercials and maybe some money back so they can continue to do stuff. There's like 140 million homes that these three services are in. That's their scope that they get into. They get they touch that many people. The service that is allowing these commercials to be added pushes horror. Like they're really big into horror and independent horror and horror films. So anything that can push fan films and independent stuff that leads to more stuff getting on the shelves, online, into maybe movie theaters, 
for any horror fan is a big deal. I mean, that's how you find guys that are making the next great horror film that's showing it to you. This is huge for a lot of people. That, that is huge because, like you say, there's there's not a lot of outlets. You've got your film festivals, you've got YouTube, you know, mm-hmm. and fan films have their premieres and stuff. Usually people rent theater that you know, in their hometown or where the film is shot. But, I mean, to have this kind of grand stage, uh, that's a fantastic opportunity. And uh, maybe even allow some small podcasts, radio, small marketing companies that do horror-related stuff to have commercials on these movies that maybe they couldn't find before because they don't have that audience. You know, It's not available for them to put stuff on Hallmark Channel when they're showing a Hallmark Christmas or, you know, stuff like that. We're going to have to reach out and see if they'll do something for I Like It Spooky. You never know. I don't know if you want to put this face on TV, but, I mean, if it's during a horror movie, it might fit right in. His mask is so realistic, Mommy. (laughs) All right, so that's all with the news. Now we're heading over to Jason with the financial report. Well, we're still poor, and let me tell you why. Got a couple of pickups this week. Of course I do. I always have something coming in. The mailman freaking hates me, but hey, keeping them employed. I got a couple autograph pictures. I'm a big Halloween fan, and I'm trying to get autographs of everybody. Uh, my buddy Clint here is going to help me out with some coming up in the next couple months. For a small fee. I'm not going to be able to make it to. Whoa. <laughs> we didn't talk about this. You son of a... No, nah, anyway. I just want cuddles. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather pay, thanks. <laughs> you can pay me for cuddles. There's no shame to my game. Oh, oh. Uh, anyway, uh, I picked up a Halloween 4 uh, Kathleen Kinmont autograph picture, kind of going to my collection. She's a girl in Halloween 4 that was, you know, very well endowed and had the cool, had the t-shirt, like, um, cops do it by the book or whatever. It said something like that on it. So it's kind of a cool picture. She's who I was talking about the last episode when I said Bride or Reanimator. We were talking about Bride of Frankenstein, and she popped in my head. That's who I was talking about. Is she the Bride of the Reanimator? She she played uh, Bride Bride of Reanimator. Yeah. Oh, nice. nice. That makes okay. it cooler awesome. than being Halloween. Yeah, of course I picked that up. <laughs> no stop. I know I picked that up, and then I saw that they advertised that she was going to be there. I'm like, oh, hell. Well, now I'll have a couple. It's fine, you know. Uh, then I picked up a Tawny Moyer. She was one of the nurses in Halloween 2, the one that got stabbed in the back with a scalpel and lifted up in the air. Uh, I picked up an autograph picture of her. So it was kind of a light couple weeks for me, but saving up for all these cons coming up. What'd you get, So, Clint? So you guys can't see this, obviously, because you're listening to a podcast, but we, we will put pictures of this stuff up on our socials and, you know, maybe some videos here in the near future of our different different things we have. But one of the reasons that I am still poor and will continue to be poor, and I'm going to show these guys, even though you listen and can't see it, I want to make them jealous. This ties in with the movie that we're going to be re- uh, reviewing later. But first, I have this nice Angela Ooh. sealed Night of the Demons. Did I just give it away? Ooh. Action figure here. And this one is not signed yet. I still need to meet Amelia Kincaid. I have not done that. And the other one that That's I awesome. want to show, and you guys, they've actually... Is that from Screen Factory? That is. Both of these are Screen that Factory, one of NECA and Screen Factory. Oh, yeah. nice. And then this one is another Night of the Demons box set. This is Susie and Stooge. Uh, Susie was played by Linnea Very Quigley, cool. and Stooge was played by Hal Havens. Um, and I've got this autographed by Linnea. She wrote on there, do you have sour balls? <laughs> <laughs> I was so nervous when I, I met her last year when I met you guys at Midwest Monster Fest. Yep. And her and I actually even have mutual acquaintances. So I had something to talk to her about when I met her, which I like doing because I hate going, hi, I like your movies, you know. So, but even with that, she was like the first woman that I can remember seeing naked. I was so nervous to meet her. And there's like a picture where I'm standing next to her and like I'm trying to do the whole point at her. You, you point at the star <laughs> and the star points to you. And I couldn't even get my two fingers to separate. I was just. <laughs> It was, it was, um, so that's why I'm still broke, though, because of my Night of the Demons toys and the autographs to go with them. Very awesome. Well, I don't have any mutual friends with Linnea, but uh, I did have uh, lunch with her last year, sat right next to her. So. That's cool. So very you guys nice got to talk about croutons and black olives. And... No, but I do have this. 
I know you guys can't see it, but this is a Joe Bob Briggs plushie that talks. Joe Bob says, check, check it out. out. So I got Joe Bob. I don't know if everybody that listens to the podcast or everybody in general that knows me, I'm a big Joe Bob and Darcy fan. I've been lucky enough to meet him. I wrote him a letter and he wrote me back. Super cool. And here's Darcy. I'll share these. I just got them in the mail today. Oh my God. I am obsessed with this movie. They both talk. They both say like five things. Um, she's got like a letter, you know, Joe Bob's mail and he's got a, a beer. Oh, One yeah. of the Lone Star beers that he drinks every episode, yeah. The uh, Fright Rags did these uh, for the season, this season's uh, premiere, and they were 60 bucks for both, which, I mean, talking plush is there's only 3000 being made. I don't think that's too bad, but... I'll explain it to you later. I think they're cool. The hardest part's going to be keeping them away from the three-year-old. Really cool. You know, Joe Bob's got a bolo tie. Darcy's got a little mail basket. I'll put them back in the box and try to keep them away from her for now until I can find somewhere I want to put them. I remember Very when cool. you bought those, when you bought those, the three of us were having a, a Facebook messenger conversation. Hey, I just picked this up today. Hey, this just showed up in the mail today. Brian just chimes in. He's like, yeah, well, I just bought two plush dolls for 60 bucks. <laughs> we're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I think my buddy Tad Good had shared them with me because he, he and I get online on Friday nights and we talk and I'm on the on the I like it spooky thing and my Twitter and I like it spooky Twitter and I'm tagging them and he's on his uh, podcast page and he's we're both talking back and forth. So he's a big Joe Bob and Darcy fan as I am. He had sent me the link when they went on sale. I was at work. I think like you sent me the link next, Clint. And I was like, I already bought yeah, it. That's like, right. What? Was already? I was like, yeah, yeah. Like, it's weird. Like, I thought it would be something that would go quick, but, I mean, they're still available, but, I mean, they're available on Fright Rags. If anybody wants them, go get them. Like, I think they're super cool. And I mean, 30 bucks for a plush that's limited, that has five sayings, I don't think that's bad. I mean, You know, and that's another reason that we're going to continue to be poor. Fright Rags and Trick or Treat Studios does this, too, but they, they've learned, and they are coming out with their own exclusive mm-hmm. merchandise, and they're teaming up with outside entities. Yep. And the stuff that they're coming out with... Both of those that I mentioned, Fright Rags and Trick or Treat Studios, this stuff is badass. That's something else I just spent some money on is um, there was a Kickstarter for My Bloody Valentine board game. And then they, they had a mm. Kickstarter for it, and then you could get add-ons and expansion packs. So I bought two of them because I had to have one unsealed, or I mean um, one unopened for the collection, <laughs> mm. and then one to play with. It looks like you're going to be playing with those dolls for a while. Yeah, well, I don't know if I'll be playing with them, but they're cool. I like them. I mean, I'll find somewhere to put them up in the, you know, Return of Living Dead, a little bit of Godzilla, you know, Joe Bob room. Trying to get less stuff. Not you need to get more. a little trailer and bring it and the to, seats and make like a diorama of them. That'd be cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> where they're sitting, yeah, watching a little movie. There you go. Get the little like long yeah, I'll chairs. Have to, I'll have to find something where I can put them. I have a autographed. Uh, 11 by 17 from Joe Bob and Darcy when we met him a couple of years ago. He, uh, they both autographed it to Jack and I. So my son is 16. I know I forgot about Fright Rags a couple things from them. I buy their pint glasses all the time. Like whenever they post them, yeah. I buy two of them just because I got to have two. I don't know why. It's kind of expensive for those. And they just came out with the Halfway to Halloween t shirts. They mm-hmm. posted yeah. those on Wednesday, I think when Tuesday, Wednesday. And then I got it on Saturday right before we were about about to go out of the house. So I opened it up and threw it on. Of course, it was a Halloween. It was like an old like newsprint ad. Oh, yeah. And it said, the only thing smiling in Haddonfield tonight. And it showed like a jack-o'-lantern smiling. It was oh, pretty fucking cool. cool. Yeah. yeah. I know we went to the, the down here in this area, Clint. We have like a flea market crafty thing that's called Scenic Drive. Well, they've been doing a spring scenic drive. So we found some... uh. I think it's called LuLaRoe leggings for the three-year-old. And the one's got like skulls and pumpkins and witches and like bones on it. I was like, we got to get her one Halloween pair. Mm-hmm. So when uh, I took her out the other day, she had LuLaRoe leggings on that were uh, like a bat, orange and black. And then the Hocus Pocus squad t-shirt because I got to dress her that day. So I was like, that's what we're going with. So not me so much poor on that one, but. 
the boss got poor because she bought her the leg. And was mama so. shaking her head and telling everybody, yeah, yeah, he dressed her today. I had nothing to do with this. Well, she, yeah, she's like, oh, that was a, it was Saturday when I took her, her and I went to coffee with some friends. So I dressed her and she's like, of course you would dress her in that. Oh, like, yeah. it's halfway to Halloween. It's a summer solstice or spring, you know, the, the old pagan, uh, celebration of witches and orgies and drinking and all that was um april 30th to may 1st so i was like yeah we gotta dress her up this is a holiday we should have halloween several times a year not just once it's a state of mind not a holiday i mean yeah it's a holiday but yeah it's always in my house well now that we know why we are going to continue to be broke for a long time and that we're teaching our children how to be broke as well we better take it to a sponsor I swear, I would sell my soul for a better sound. Three, three, three. Have evil effects. You can summon triple three half evil effects for all of your guitar pedal desires on Facebook. At three 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 half dash evil effects. Three 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 half evil effects. Quality, custom, affordable, and evil. Hey, everybody. So we did get a question this week. We reached out to the audience and I uh, asked, I I posted on my Facebook and said, ask the craziest thing you could think of. Well, when you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. And we got the craziest question. Maybe not the craziest question, but we got a pretty crazy question. So we got Tony Miller from Burlington, Iowa. He's not crazy. Yeah, old Tony. So Tony asks, your butthole is forever sealed shut. And you have to decide what hole it now has to come out of. What do you pick? <laughs> I'm staring at Jason's face the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, what's considered a hole, I guess? Like, well, you got mouth, ears, not two nostrils, and two eyeballs. Oh, Jesus. Or, or your hole that belly you button. urinate out of. Oh, well, that's Jesus. not a hole. That's closed. We had this discussion over dinner tonight. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with Tony? <laughs> so when, when, when I heard this question, the, the first two things that popped in my head. Holy yeah, shit is right. <laughs> the first two things that popped in my head. First, human centipede popped in my head. And I was like, that's that's just fucking mm-hmm. gross. Yeah, yeah. And for whatever reason, the second thing that popped in my head was the song by the ice T metal band Body Count. Talk shit, get shot. <laughs> Those are the first two things that popped in my head. But I have I have an answer for Tony's question if you guys don't. Because it's pretty simple. Oh, go it, ahead. It's I pretty have an simple. Answer. If that's sealed and I gotta choose one, I'll be known as a shit talker the rest of my life because that'll be the less the least painful orifice for that to come out of. I'll just open up, puke, brush my teeth twice a day or so, and on the way we go. Yeah, I didn't even think about like what if you're constipated and that has to come out your ear or your nose or your in theory defecate out of the hole that you urinate but if you're constipated oh my god and you have a huge <laughs> then it's gonna hurt coming out of that like <sighs> thanks tony that's yeah. yeah that's like the yeah can't come out of your ear like because if again if you're constipated like your nose or your yeah you know, like unless your ear is gonna stretch like your rectum this, this would have been know, a like, great this would have been a great question if we were covering like a trauma flick yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to start the episode with this. I'll just with the, I'll just put somebody's answer, and that'll be how we open. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm gonna have to go mouth too. Like you just have to like. Oh God! Brush your teeth and carry the spray around that you. I would purposely go get COVID so I wouldn't taste or smell anything. You'd get like a trach, so it'd come out of that. Oh, 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 wait. <laughs> Wait, I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> I gotta go really bad. And you're like holding your chin down to your chest so oh. it doesn't come out. And then every time you burp, do you, so if you burp, is it a burp yeah. or a fart? <laughs> like, <laughs> <what>? <laughs> Which one is it? <laughs> I 
think I'd become a vegetarian, man. There, no red meat, no, just lettuce. I would just eat lettuce the rest of my life. A yeah. fucking rabbit. Just yeah. liquid diet. Everything would um, be a smoothie. Like all your food would be a smoothie. Hey, whose idea was it to ask the audience questions anyway? <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. That was mine, wasn't it? <laughs> well, this will be the last time we ask the questions. Thank you for the two people that chimed in. <laughs> Brett and Tony got it banned. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Too good. oh lord! I guess I'll I'll, I'll go with I'll go with the mouth too. We'll all be a bunch of shit talkers. I, guess. I mean, we're on a podcast, so we got the perfect <laughs> job going right now for it. We just sit here and talk shit. <laughs> yeah, if you uh, if you have something in your teeth, do you? Is it from dinner or from after? Dinner? I'm trying to ignore your question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ga- I gather that I'm the only one that's watched all three human centipedes. I, I haven't seen them. I haven't. And I, I tell you what, and I love shock and I love splatter. And I just have uh-huh. not been able to bring myself to watch them. No, I'm with yeah. you. If you're going like, if you're going for shock, skip the first one because it's kind of not on that level. The idea of the movie is insane, but like it doesn't get to the level that two does. And three is pretty much the doctor from the first one playing a warden, screaming at everybody the whole movie. Ridiculous. Two would be where you would sit. It's probably the most disturbing of them all. If you're going to watch, you would want to watch the one that you're going to get your money out of or whatever. I mean, yeah, like. I'll still pass. Yeah, yeah. It's not something that I would be like, oh, you got to go watch these. It's great cinematography and acting. and you know. I don't know. Maybe one of these days I'll watch one or two or three of them. But I tell you what, I'm glad that I watched the movie, that we watched the movie again, that we're going to discuss tonight. And that is Night of the Demons. Hey, Grandpa, look at the barrel. <laughs> you filthy bastards. Damn you all to hell. Happy Halloween, asshole. So we covered Night of the Demons, 1988. 1988. The there are several Night of the Demons. Yeah, there's another Night of the Demons, 19, uh, 2000. I, don't know. I accidentally put that on and watched about five minutes of it. I'm like, this is a wrong movie. Okay, I'm going to go. I almost watched it for this so that I could be like, oh, well, how would you guys think of the movie? And then I would be like the asshole that watched the wrong movie. The right movie, but like the wrong one of them. <laughs> but then I was like, no, I'm not going to waste my time on this. I can't imagine it's better than the original. You know, we, we talked in the... Clint already gave uh, well, us a rating. I, this isn't my top ten. Again, we, we talked in the last episode when we put the four choices out, and all of us said, hell, you could choose any one of the four choices and we'd be happy. But I was stoked about Night of the Demons because it's on my top oh, yeah. ten. Now, so, I mean, I've seen it a gajillion times, but I watched it last night just for a, re- a rewatch, just to refresh, see if there's anything I've missed. We haven't given a synopsis of the movie yet, but I, so I was lazy and I was on the couch and it was late. And so I just brought it up on Amazon. I paid two bucks and I watched it on Prime. And here was the synopsis that Prime gave. Forty kids on Halloween get possessed by demons. That was it. That's it. That's it. Enough said. That's <laughs> it. Got Clint's two yeah, bucks. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I gather that the person <laughs> that wrote that synopsis was like, I got to write another one before I meet my fucking quota. <laughs> yeah. Ah, let's do this. So, one. uh, Demon Night was originally titled Halloween Party or Demon Night. See, I'm calling it Demon Night. There's too many demons. Night of the Demons was it originally titled <laughs> Halloween Party. And I never knew this, but it's also known in the U.S. as Demon Boogie. Have you guys ever seen it as Demon Boogie? Demon mm-hmm. Boogie. Yeah, uh-uh. I, just, I did some research Demon to Boogie. see if there yeah. was stuff that I didn't know about it. And that was one of them. I mean, I've never seen it anywhere as Demon Boogie. Well, I didn't like how it started out. Like, kids making fun of that poor old man he wouldn't do anything to hurt anybody and they're just sitting there yeah, fucking he was with just him. trying to hand out fresh produce and halloween what a swell fella yeah well yep. we've all got a uh, we've all we've all got a fuck off tone tonight don't we <laughs> <laughs> so this was one of the movies that i watched in my deep dive into horror a couple of years ago where i did 300 movies in a year it's got linnea quigley in it it's got some other people that are really great in it it's on a lot of people's top 10 list, top five. It's one of those that, you know, the eighties kind of spawned these movies and it made a lot of people's lists on stuff. When you jump into that horror pool, 
you need to watch this movie. It's one of those. I mean, it's been, it was probably one of my earlier ones, maybe the top, one of the first 50 that I watched. And it opens up, you know, this old guy, these kids are being assholes to him. He's going to feed them apples with razors in it. And then I forgot that first part. I The first thing I remember, I thought the opening was Linnea Quigley bent over so her friend could steal a bunch of stuff. For that's where you remember the movie starting. I thought that was the opening. Yeah, that's the re- opening I remember. Like, yeah, that's I'm what like, everybody remembers. I don't remember any of this. She's looking at a box of Tide for a half hour so her friend can raid the store. And these guys are just staring at her, like just looking, 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 and looking, and looking. And this girl goes through every aisle of the store and steals like two items. And there's a bunch of people in there shopping. And they just don't care. They're just like buying what they need. They don't care about her stealing a bunch of stuff. I must I must be a complete nerd then because despite the fact that Linnea Quigley is my hall pass, what I remember about the the opening of that movie is the opening, the animated uh, sequence with all the titles and stuff, the oh, very beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, the first time I saw that instantly drew me in. Very well done. Oh, it's weird. Yeah. I thought I was wondering when the hell that was going to end. I thought that was the longest opening. You know, ever. the old lady was watching the movie with me last night. He said the same thing. She's like, don't you, aren't you glad that movies don't do this anymore? I was like, what do you, I want more of this cartoon. Keep it rolling. This is awesome. Yeah. See, I'm with her. I was like, just get to the fucking movie. I guess I didn't appreciate that animation as much. So I'm going to have to go back and watch it. I appreciated the animation, but the music to this just hit me like that music. And then throughout the movie, I was like, oh, this is really good music. Like, and then they would play like some other music without vocals. And I'd be like, oh, this is crappy. I felt like they did an awful job to me not playing enough of the music with lyrics. You know, they would go to like just soundtrack stuff. And I was like, I don't like that. I want to go back to that. I would catch myself bobbing along with the music and then they would go to just the soundtrack. Yeah, you you, or, you, you know, wanted you wanted more thing. soundtrack and less score is what you're saying. Like you wanted you wanted more oh, yeah. of like yeah, Bajas with Stigmata. You know, mm-hmm. all of the yep. all of the music for this movie, almost all of it, was done by Dennis Michael Tenney. And um he is the brother of the direct of the director, Kevin S. Tenney. And I mean, even most of those songs, mm-hmm. the soundtrack, not score, but soundtrack songs that you hear in that flick are done by him, except for Bajas, which I'm pretty sure I'm saying Bajas, right? the Stigmata song where Angela's dancing after she's become a demon. I think that's mm. the only song that was an outside artist. I was just going to say that the movie uh, spawned a couple sequels. And Brian, you were talking earlier about which one am I watching? Is it, you know, 2009 or whatever? Of course, it had Night of the Demons 2, which I don't know if you guys have seen that, but it's a great flick. Night of the Demons 3, which I I found a, a really unwatchable version of it on YouTube. I tried to watch it. It looked terrible. And then in 2009, they did a sequel with uh, Shannon Elizabeth and Edward Furlong. So Night of the Demons 2, it was pretty good. Did it have anything to do with all this, or was it just yeah. a completely different No, movie? 2 and 3 were both direct sequels. Um, 3, I can't really tell you, because no. again, it was the, the copy that I had was so damn choppy that I couldn't figure out really what was going on. Mm-hmm. But 2, Angela, her little sister, is living in this, like... Um, christian boarding home for wayward girls and boys you know they find their way back to the house and angela's still there and then that movie ensues that's a pretty solid flick too it's it's pretty close to the original oh so angela's in it again is she, it the same yep yep amelia again? kincaid and she's in all three of them oh, okay she's in all three really, really she's not in the remake yeah but. i like this movie i kind of got into it i think when i was watching some of the stuff when i was going to go meet linnea quigley for the first time like i'd never seen uh Hollywood chainsaw hookers. I just knew, of course, you know, Return of the Living Dead was the big one for her. Her biggest movie. Well, probably, arguably, I guess. But yeah, so I got into this, and now I've seen it a few times. I wouldn't say it's in my top ten. It was pretty good. It was weird. Some of the characters were pretty douchey. The way they set up the story, like, had me cracking up the most. Like, when they finally get to the party place, and they're talking about the stream underneath the wall that won't let the demons pass. So it was just, I guess it was kind of setting it up and giving filler for the rest of the movie. That was actually one of the things that I've always loved about this movie is the backstory of Hull House. It unfolds, it progresses throughout the movie. So I thought it was neat. You didn't show up here. This this is what happened here 50 years ago and explain it all. When they, as they, when they explained it as the movie went on, there were a lot of throughouts. Like in the beginning, he talks about the underground stream right when they get there. 
and then that plays into mm-hmm. to the ending of the movie. And plus the stories that he told, yep, like yep. they show up outside or you know, they, they stop a ways down the drive from the house and they tell a little bit about how the the last the whole family, you know, they're all so massacred they couldn't find out who did it because there was so much blood and guts. And then when they get to the house, the stream, and then they get into the mm-hmm. house and they talk about someone fired the maid because they they did they torched her she was barbecued and just the story keeps going and growing the pacing of the movie along with the story it's really well it doesn't lag or sag it just keeps on moving it's really cool cool pace so yeah i feel like you could watch this movie you could see it a first time and be taken in by the visuals and the special effects and um, getting to know the actors and then you could watch it again and you could be pulled in by the story and the like, nudity it's got a lot there's a lot going on at points that you're like, I could watch this again and find, you know, maybe I'm paying attention to what Linnea is doing when she's drawing on her breasts with the lipstick and I'm not listening to what they're saying in the story. So I could watch it again and not be pulled in as much on what's going on with the characters and the actors and hear the story. And maybe the third or fourth time you watch it, you get the whole thing. I watched it, like I said, I don't remember that in that beginning. I could probably watch it again tomorrow and be like, oh, yeah, I don't remember that. Like, I remember some of the stories, but I don't. Um, but then they were sitting downstairs and the guy was talking about some stuff like the family being massacred. And I was like, I don't remember that. Like, There's so much stuff in the movie that in an hour and a half, that drew me in right there. You throw an hour and a half movie at me, sign me up. But a lot of the action doesn't start until that third part of the movie. You know, that last 30 minutes is when the shit really hits the fan. Yeah, and there's so many scenes that before they even get to that house that I thought were mm-hmm. that were pretty good. You know, it's kind of funny, the little uh, the brother hiding in his sister's closet and then coming mm-hmm. out and talking about his, his sister's chest. Her, her bodacious, which was kind her of bodacious weird. boobies, <laughs> like, he says. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, that's funny. You didn't want any of the mom's chocolate candy? The sun-dried poodle turds. Oh, see, I don't even remember, remember that. You. Oh, is the, that? You don't remember those? Uh-uh, uh-uh. The, she, the, like, the guy showed up to take the sister out. Oh, she the, offered him, yeah. Brothers. Yeah, and they look like turds. They look oh, like dog yeah. turds or cat I guess turds. I didn't pay much attention to that. And I, oh, yeah, yeah. See, and she was the... <laughs> must have got distracted by something. She like was that. the only character, although it made sense she was there. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do nothing but talk this movie up because I've always been in love with this flick from the beginning to end, but... I thought all the characters were dynamic and all of them served some purpose, whether great or small, to move the story forward. None of them were flat. None of Mm -hmm. them were boring. None of them shouldn't have been there. The mom was like probably the only character I can think of who, if she wasn't there in that scene, the movie would have continued just fine. But all those teens, Mm -hmm. all those teens played their role, their part to, to keep that movie going. Oh yeah, the brother's great. The old, the old man. The little great. side story um, there. Yeah, the guy that had the pig nose. Stooge. He said it. Hell happens. Stooge. Mm-hmm. He's so douchey that you hate him. When is this asshole gonna die? Like he's so mean to that girl, and just in general is a douche. And we all know that guy. We all went to school with that guy. We all know that guy. I'm yeah, wearing Stooge's shirt. You know, like so you want him to die? Yeah. Yeah, he's wearing the same, Clint's wearing the same uh, shirt as Stooge had on in the movie. And you're just like, when's this guy going to die? Like, but again, you want that in a movie. You don't want characters that you could care less about. You want people that you either love or you hate. You don't want anybody in between because you want to tie into them in a movie, even if it's hatred. Because that's probably the strongest emotion in mankind is hatred. Probably pushes people more than anything in life. Oh, well, and Stooge was a complete asshole, but, and, and this, people, yeah. I've said this before, and people look at me like I'm nuts, but his character in that movie brought the high energy and the edginess to keep it uh, an edgy teen, scary movie, party movie, you know what I mean? And so people think I'm crazy when I say mm-hmm. this, but I ref- when I see characters like that in movie, I always refer to him as Renfield from the original Dracula, and everybody's like, what? And I'm like, Dwight, uh, yeah, Dwight Fry. That Renfield character in the original Dracula had so much energy, and it just his eyes were wide, and he was animated, mm-hmm. and he was just articulate, and you just it drew you in and kept the story going. In my opinion, Stooge is Renfield in this, uh, not the same character, but the same energy. Yeah, no, you're yeah. right. Yeah, he he was the one that was wanting to keep the party going. I mean, it just like I yeah. I see what you say about the energy. 
And like Brian was saying earlier, I was like, the first couple times I watched it, I was like, this guy's fucking annoying. And now I'm like, oh, okay, I wouldn't mind like partying with this asshole. Sometimes. What's crazy about Stooge is the yeah, uh, you want to party with the him. actor who plays him, Hal Havens. I haven't met him yet. I need to to get him to sign my my two pack there. Um, but I've heard that he is one of the most humble people. Uh, I've heard stories about him almost being in tears. Like I can't believe that people want to pay me for my autograph. So I, I think no. what well, what's cool about that too is um, it shows if if there's truth to that. I've heard it a lot from a lot of different people. It shows his strengths as an actor because if he is the complete opposite, Stooge is. Stooge is a prick. You know what I mean? And if, if him in real life is the complete opposite, that just makes it even better. And then plus, he also played in Slime bowl arama Sorority Girls at the Slime bowl arama And in that movie, if you watch it, he's almost like this innocent little virgin Christian kid. He's just sweet and innocent and soft-spoken. Oh, that's funny. I'm going to have to go back and watch that now. I didn't know that. Yeah, he's the kind of guy you want to party with, but you don't want him to date your sister. Unless you don't like your sister, and then you're like, yeah, you can date her. You can date her. I don't like her. Go to town, dude. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, you know. That's this a hell movie. of a haircut he had. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like the mullet with racing That's stripes a, or whatever it was. With the, yeah, with the yeah, stripes. He had a mohawk head. mullet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He had the and best then, haircut in the whole movie. That's going to be a great place to enter some audio where he says, Eat a bowl of fuck. I am here to party. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> My favorite was when uh Linnea's, you know, she's a demon and she's like, I want to go to the bathroom or whatever she says. And the Sal's like, Well, I'll go with you. I'll protect you. And she's like, No, I want to go with Stooge. And he's like, What the fuck with Stooge? He's a pig. And she's like, Well, maybe I'm in the mood for pork. Maybe I want some <laughs> pork tonight. Mood for pork uh-huh. tonight. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go find the bathroom. Ooh, good idea. I'll go, too, to protect you. Oh, no, thanks. I'd rather take Stooge. Stooge? Hey, you heard of the lady, man? She wants real man gardener charm. But Stooge is a fat pig. Maybe I'm in the mood for pork tonight. <laughs> and then, he, yeah, he goes, he snorts. I was like, what the fuck? I think we had talked about that before, Clint, like, so many one-liners in this. You're like, which one's my favorite? Like, mm-hmm. so we don't even have to. We don't even have to movie. talk about the movie. We could just play, you know, thirty minutes or so of of one-liners. I, I love the terrible decisions that you know kind of get all these kids in this trouble. Like they already go into it knowing that the house is possessed, but then of course they want to do some kind of a seance, whatever they call it, past life just seance, something to. There you go. Yep. Which I didn't get that. And they were like, let's find the mirror. And... They said, let's, let's have a seance. They're like, no, that's a little chancy. We're, you know, cause we're in this haunted mortuary where mm-hmm. all this bad shit happened and it's Halloween. So let's just have a past life seance. That'll be safer. Okay. Yeah. I like the, yeah. bla- I like the black guy in this. He's like, all right, fuck y'all. Bye. <laughs> he, <Yeah>. was, he <laughs> wanted nothing to do with it. I yep. could totally relate with that guy. I would be the same guy. I'm like, all right. I got to leave. Yeah. No, nope. I had to go. <laughs> I would well, probably then, not gone to this party. Like one of my favorite scenes in the whole movie, though, I, I just liked the way it was shot. Was at first I thought it was fucking stupid, but when they did the seance and they saw like the visions, or that girl saw the visions, and then the mirror fell and broke, all the glass was like perfectly oh, lined, I love that shot. like facing up. Yeah, and then everybody like slowly walks up into the shot, and you can see it from the broken glass perspective, and everybody's in the shot fucking amazing i love that well that's if you go back and watch this again if you didn't notice it before the camera work in this movie is absolutely phenomenal and it's almost always in motion there are very few yeah very few set shots and then there's actually even some stuff to to evil dead when the demon after the seance and they raise the demon um i think he was going to come out anyway though (laughs) but um when he comes out of the uh the furnace in the mortuary it's that evil dead where, you know, the demons are coming through the woods. The deadites mm-hmm. are coming through the woods. The same camera work. Yep. But yeah, there was a lot of, a like lot of great shots. Yeah. Yep. That mirror reminded me of a Army of Darkness when the mirror breaks and you see all the ashes. The, um, ash in the mirror. And then they, yeah, the little ashes come out. So I was like, oh, I want something like that. But you can't have hey, it. Hey, maybe that's movie, where the idea yeah, came from. Yeah. Yeah. It made up for some of the other shaky cam stuff that I was like, oh, I'm going to get nauseous watching this guy run across the street towards the old man with the you know the camera going Ugh. 
to scare them. Well, they were definitely, they were definitely, yeah, yeah. in my opinion, um, experimenting because Kevin Tenney, who directed this, mm-hmm. before this, he directed um, Witchboard with Tawny Katane. I think just passed away, Tawny Katane did. And he, mm-hmm. uh, after Night of the Demons, he went and did part two, directed part two. But that movie is, um, it's the complete opposite of Night of the Demons. It's almost like a soap opera, and there's not a lot of crazy shots. You know what I mean? So I saw a lot of experimentation. I loved it. Apparently. Yeah. Not said one bad thing no, about well, it. No, well, I can't. Man, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just, this movie yeah. is phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's top ten for him. I mean. Well, and then, how old would you have been when this came out then? 10, uh, 11? 10, yeah. Yep. Right in your wheelhouse of stuff that you saw when you were younger that kind of grabbed you. And you know, I have, you I have a it. theory. I have a theory about that. And it roughly, and this is an average, but if you think about it, roughly when everybody's, you know, 8, 9, 10, 11 years old, that's when you mm-hmm. like first are really introduced to the world, whatever the world around you is. And so that's when you're first given a little bit more adult freedom and you see things that you might not have seen before. And I think that's when you really put those core memories of at least your pop culture self in. And I think everybody gets older and they go through their phases and then they come back to that 10 year old Mm -hmm. self. And I'll always be here watching Night of the Demons as my 10 year old self. I think Jason and I had talked about this before. Like my early memories of horror movies were, the Incredible Melting Man, which I just watched not too long ago. Fantastic flick. Truth or Dare, A Critical Consequence, which is a shot on video, Tim Ritter, which is probably awful, but I just have that love for it because I remember it. It was my early face to death, that kind of stuff that I probably should not have been watching, you know, that I wouldn't let my 10-year-old watch. Kind of is fed into maybe some of the stuff that I'm the only person that's seen Human Centipede. I'm in this group you know like some of that stuff probably feeds back to i was watching faces of death i was watching tim ritter movies you know stuff like that i wouldn't tell anybody to go back and watch faces of death maybe i would because it's important in horror cinema and where we are today maybe part one just not part four was part four the it was bad either one? part three or part four there was the whole mytho of is this real or not and you know i was a kid when those came out we're all the same mm-hmm. age yeah we're, yeah, the, we're the crazy 44s here. Yeah, and, yeah. um, yeah, it was the third one, I think, where the magician, it was the, we're talking about Faces of Death now, where the magician was laying there and he had to get out before the candle burned the rope. And it was clear as day that when he didn't get out mm-hmm. in time, that yep. it was a dummy. And I'm like, this is staged. It's all staged. But yeah, it's important to where we are in cinema. And I've even gone back and looked at some other stuff that was like the early found footage uh mondo carne is on my list to watch soon i guess that's like the first big found footage documentary style put together movie that kind of started that all and it won awards for you know soundtrack and music and whatnot kind of is the go back when people say you watch something that started this kind of like cannibal holocaust it was a precursor to that which cannibal holocaust was a precursor to face the death and i'm gonna have to show you my um my incredible melting man action figure. I didn't know that anybody else in the free world was a fan of that besides me. But. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen that movie, Jason? No. No, it's a 78, early yeah, late 70s. Yeah, mid late 70s. Yeah. I can't remember if it was 78 or not, but. It's good. I mean, it's. I'll have to check it out. It made yeah. me afraid of going yeah. near bushes when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought the bush was going to shake and then I was going to become this oozing, melting leper, you know. Oh, well, you're no leper. Well, talking about that 10 year old self. Just like the last movie we covered, Trick or Treat, they said it was a horror comedy. Night of the Demons is listed as a horror comedy fantasy. Once again, I don't know, maybe I'm just not a funny, funny guy, but I don't get the comedy in this movie. There is a little bit of levity, but there's not comedy. And the only fantasy I get from this movie is I remember being 10 years old and fantasizing about Linnea Quigley and... uh you know, Kathy, who played Judy, and Jill, who played Franny, and Amelia, who played Angela. I fantasized about them a lot. So I guess I get the fantasy part. Yeah, I don't really see fantasy. I could see some of the, maybe not back then when it came out, but like, you know, 20 years or 30, however long it's been. Now we see some comedy in it or feel like there's some comedy in it. But some of the stuff that you would call comedy is just kind of like Jason said, douchey. You know, maybe 10 years ago or 20 years ago, you know, it was funny, but nowadays I don't see that it would be comedy. 
I think, well, there, there were some funny parts, you know, Stooge, the way he was acting. I think this was more, could be more listed as comedy than Trick or Treat did. But yeah, I'm with you. This was just more horror, not so much comedy. I don't know. I got I to gotta kick out of some of the parts, though. Like, I'll watch horror movies and, like, laugh about certain things. So maybe, I don't know. It's not so much funny, but I just find amusing. Like, when uh, after they do the thing and Angela's like, okay, maybe I should leave, too. Like, she was talking about leaving. And that's right when Linnea got possessed. And she's like, oh, no, this is your party. You're staying. So, I mean, I kind of got a kick out of that. It was just like, oh, she's trying to change her tune. And then... Then she go over there and like grab her and kiss her or something. Yeah. And then that's how she puts part of the demon in her also and Yeah, yeah. Kinda gets it rolling more, so Yeah, she says, I'm up for anything tonight or something along those lines. Yeah, Linnea yeah, so, was great. I mean, I, yeah, I could see the one liners, people finding humor in a lot of the one liners. Yeah, it's it's more horror and especially that last hour of half hour of everything. I would imagine I'm I'm not sure. I think Clint had a note on how much it cost to make the movie. It was uh, 1.2 mil and it made 3.1. So it doubled its money. That last half hour of the movie spent that $1 million. I mean, there's so many special effects, so much makeup, so many things going on. I would imagine the last half hour of this movie spent that budget, most of it. Steve Johnson did the uh, did the special makeup effects for this. This was still fairly early on in his career, and that this is he was married to Linnea. They met on the scene or on the set of this movie. Mm. Uh, you know, I don't think they're married anymore. But and there is a documentary that came out in 2014. It's called "You're Invited: The Making of Night of the Demons," and I've seen that. Oh. Uh, it, it's an interesting watch. I've only seen it once though, so I'm pretty sure that I'm not wrong. But I think that they were going over budget or getting close to going over budget on the effects and that's because steve johnson was trying to really make a mark and a name for himself and he's like if we're gonna do this we want it done right and i want blood and i want gore and it needs to look realistic and he was trying to you know really put his best effort forward and on that documentary they talk about one of the the makeup techniques and this really has nothing to do with cost but was you know how the demons when, when all the kids turned to the demons they had this really stretched skin look he basically took duct tape and tightened their skin, you know, so he'd start on their inner, on the inside of their cheek and then go outward and just stretch their skin out and then put layers of makeup, makeup over it. So they'd be walking around with this stretched ass skin and all this pounds of makeup on it for God knows how long, you know, a whole night of shooting. Or whatever. I don't think it was that comfortable. No, I thought the special effects were great. A lot of cool stuff, a lot of great creature transformations, you know, they go from... One second they're normal, and then the next second they got big old nasty teeth, and their face is all changed, and then they go back. I could have done without the demon. You know, one of my favorite things I could have done without the demon, just in general. That, that's it, man. We, well, he was kind of living. He was he was living through all the kids, and then after everybody escaped, he just kind of popped up there to show, like, yeah, oh, I'm still here, but you know, it was the slightest bit cheesy. This movie's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Don't say anything else bad about it, okay? Just just stop <laughs> with the negativity. I can't take your negativity. No, I get what you mean. It was a lot of practical mm -hmm, effects, mm -hmm. and then it was a little jarring because that was, like, mm -hmm. early CGI. Which I don't even know if that was CGI or if it was just, um, like, an yeah, yeah. film. You know what I mean? Like, the old beer trick. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, so yeah. It, it, was a, it was a jolt for what we had seen throughout the whole movie. I wasn't even that yeah. mad. This is definitely a movie, though, you could put on every year. You could watch it several times. You could put it on every year around Halloween. It's not something that you're going to burn through and get sick of. It's going to be fresh enough and new enough and enough going on that every year around Halloween you can watch it and it not get old. Yeah, we're we're actually we're starting a theme here. I mean, the last movie we covered, Trick or Treat, was a Halloween movie. This is a Halloween movie. We could, uh, we could build a list of Halloween movies, 31 movies for Halloween. I know, I've tried that every year, and then I get to about day two or three, and then I fail. <laughs> it's just, yeah. don't even give it a good try. What were some of the things you didn't like about the movie, Clint? Like what, I know you're such a fanboy, but. I am with this movie. I could, I've got about yeah. 10 more things here to read you that I did like about it, but I really, I just, <laughs> I can't. I'll, I'll tell you, okay, and actually, I'll, I'll try to give you a, a, it's not even a negative. The first few times I watched this movie, I had a, the slightest bit of a hard time with 
the few kids that got killed and then came back as demons towards the end of the movie when Judy, the virgin, the last last girl, final girl, when she's trying to escape and she's climbing up this wall, which was brutal, man. The only way to get out of this place is to climb up a brick wall with barbed wire hanging down. And so you got to hang on and pull yourself up, tearing your hands to shreds. So you felt for this girl. Um, and all the demons are gathered around here trying to pull her down. The kids who became got killed and became demons late had barely any makeup. They weren't full demon. They just kind of had like dark circles under their eyes and pale skin. And they just kind of looked like zombies from Night of the Living Dead or Dawn of the Dead or something. So I actually had a, an issue with that the first few times. But then I just let it go as there's only so much demon to go around. You know what I mean? Kind of gave up. You yeah, think that good was enough. maybe light in the shoot and they were I, I short think on that's, money and yeah, time exactly. maybe. And... What drove me crazy the most was uh, the part with Judy when she's hanging from the house. And then she goes to fall. And she's falling like feet first down. And then they had to cut to a scene where she's like laying on her back, falling down on her back. And then when she lands, she lands like feet first on top of the guy that was there. It was just kind of some cheese that they didn't really need, I guess. Yeah, they were trying to do that. Uh, they had the, the vertigo camera effect a couple times. That was one where they tried to do the vertigo. Yep. One. Yeah, that probably was the least right. successful one of the film. I'm trying to give you some negatives, man. I'm trying. No, no, it's fine. Just fanboy out. It's, well, it'd be it's like good. asking. It would be like asking any of us. Oh, this. Ask me what I don't like about Return of the Living Dead, or ask Jason what he doesn't like about right. Halloween. Right. You know, what there's not going to be a lot. What do you mean? Don't like about yeah. Halloween? Like what? <laughs> exactly. There's yeah. Like absolutely nothing wrong with that master. Wait until we do that episode, then maybe I do have something that Halloween? comes to mind with Halloween, but I'm not going to talk about it now. That you don't was, like? Yeah, yeah. Just something. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just a scene, the yeah. way it was acted. Whatever. Nothing to do with Buster Rhymes, huh? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, he's a legend. Yeah? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just... <laughs> Maybe a rap legend, but not an acting legend. Yeah, I, actually, yeah. I don't mind his acting. He was great in higher learning, and he wasn't. His acting, I don't think, was bad in Halloween. Just the setup and the scenario was... When he's well, that's, I think part of what you can you can forgive movies a lot because you have fun watching it. So the few things that would bother somebody else because you love that movie and you enjoy it and you're having fun with it, you could care less about, you know, like it's like going to a sporting event or a convention and you have such a great time for, you know, if you're at a convention for three days and you have great time for, you know, all three days, except for maybe breakfast, you're, hash browns weren't done enough for you. So you're like, well, you don't remember that your hash browns weren't cooked well enough because you had a fucking great time the rest of the time you were there or you meet somebody, a celebrity that you really wanted to meet and it didn't go as well as you thought. But you had a great time the rest of the time when you were there. You don't go back to that and be like, oh, remember that celebrity I met? Fuck, it didn't go that well. I wish it would have been, I would have said this, that. You forgive it because you had an amazing time the rest of the time. So that becomes part of something that you don't even go back to. That's just the way it is. And that's how you can love this movie so much and forgive its flaws. You know, I don't think there's a perfect movie ever made that everybody in the whole world's going to enjoy. It's just not. I get what you're laying down. So what you're saying is, is that Night of the Demons is one of the best movies ever made. That's exactly what you just said. I get it. <laughs> I mean, for you. Yeah. I mean, I don't dislike the movie, but I could see where you could have a deep rooted love for it. It's probably, like you said, it's when you first saw it, you know, probably yeah. helped ingrain that love. I find out little stuff about it, too, throughout time. Like, I found out that um, Emile Kincaid, who played Angela, she was a, uh, like, a trained dancer, performance artist. She went to school at this place called Interlock, which is a, a school for the arts. Well, Interlock is in northern Michigan. I'm here in Michigan. And ever since mm -hmm. I've been a little kid, my mom and dad and I would go up to Green Lake and interlock and they go camping and i actually go up there now with my children like it's just that one thing that we've always done and so when i found out that she went there i was like that's that's pretty cool you know this place that i've gone to since i was a little kid she was mm -hmm. trained how to dance as she did in night of the demons before she caught her hands out and fire and bit stooge's tongue off how fucking cool is that and her dance career was over I don't know if she did anything else with dance after that or not. I do know that she's uh, the niece of Rue McClanahan. Rue McClanahan played Blanche on Golden Girls. Oh, that's cool. Blanche was the slutty yeah. one, right? 
That's the only so golden girl he that, remembers. Was that, <laughs> no, he knows them all. So was that your... Thank you for your... being a friend. Thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road and back again. Your heart is true. You're a pal and a confidant. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so was that your actual, like... Um, rating for this movie in the beginning when we started, absolutely, yeah. I give it yeah. ten nipple flavored lipsticks out of 10. ten. Out of ten. What do you think, Jason? What do you rate? Oh, me? Yeah, you go first. I'm gonna give it six pig snouts out of ten. <laughs> six pig snouts out of ten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for some reason, I'm hungry for barbecue now. Like I already had dinner. I ate a whole bunch of bacon before we did this yeah. show too. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it was breakfast for dinner tonight. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah Sometimes you, you feel like some pork. Yeah. You're yeah. in the mood for pork. Uh, I would probably have to go like a seven and a half out of ten barbed wire climbs over a 20 foot tall brick wall. Uh, I don't know that the wall is 20 foot tall, it but it pretty looks fucking tall, tall. Doesn't it? Maybe it's only 10. We didn't get a chance to talk about it because I was going to ask you guys this, but I forgot. It didn't really work into our conversation here, but I thought that this movie had a, a real slight slasher feel to it. I don't know if you guys picked up on that or not. And and why I say that is the victims, like Linnea quickly became a demon. Emil Kincaid became a demon. And then they started killing out all these kids one by one. And they were almost revealed in slasher fashion. And then, of course, once they were revealed, they would jump up and be a demon. But so I thought it had a real slight slasher feel to it, which added a, a whole nother layer to it. Uh, did you guys get that or? I don't know. I mean, I picture slasher. You There has to be a slasher for it to happen i guess there's probably some kind of a name for that the way you want one killer yeah that's what i kind of picture like a slasher like you want one bad and everybody else is good maybe not good because in most slasher films you're like there's always that one person you're like they're not good but do they deserve to die was it just the one demon possessing all of them and the demon was the slasher deep i like where this conversation's oh, yeah. going no yeah. right right <laughs> The demon is killing them because they're trespassing on that property. They're, in the slasher movies, there's almost always a, this is why we're killing people. I like, I like how they... killing people. I like how they went in and talked about the differences between ghosts and demons, too. I did like that part, you know, when they kind of, like, over-explained stuff. I felt that was much needed. It took the camp out of it. Because it is. It, it's, a, it's an 80s yeah, teen it's horror flick. But little things like that took the camp out of it and made it a little more, a little more of a serious, serious movie. It's definitely a, a drive-in style movie that you would see in the 80s at a drive-in. It's got, you know, blood and breasts and the demon, so it's got beasts, so it's got the three Bs that, you know, qualify it for a drive-in. I didn't do a boob count or anything, but it seemed like there was quite a showing of, you know, boobs and four. Four. That's it. I I feel, do feel like you saw him several times though. You saw Linnea's, but you know, no offense to Linnea because I love her to death and she is a talented actress and a scream queen. But you always see Linnea's movies. All right. So we got our reviews in, everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed us talking about Night of the Demons. If you've not seen it, check it out. Clint rented it. I watched it on Pluto. I don't know how Jason watched it. Yeah, it's on um, Tubi. So, yeah, isn't it on yeah, so. Shutter also? It is on Shutter. The reason I Shutter is in my bedroom, and again, I was just yeah. being lazy. I didn't want to get up, so I paid for it. And everybody may be asking, yeah. "Hey, Clint, this is like your yeah. favorite movie. How come you had to rent it? Why don't you own it?" I don't have a good answer for that. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, you don't own a copy? Of I don't. It? I don't own. A, I don't own physical media. Oh, okay. I just I know. Oh my god, I gotta have this movie because I just know that it's accessible somewhere. Yeah, I'm kind of the physical media person in this group. Jason and uh, Clint are more of the collectibles. I don't know if I own it either. Let me look. I buy I buy a lot of digital movies. Yeah, I buy a lot through Reddit and stuff. Just buy codes from people, and it's just nice because there are some movies that aren't available streaming all the time, and it's I'm trying to get like a nice little collection built up so I can have those in addition to physical. But like the pain in the ass of the physical, like. Oh, let me load it up. Let me do that. It's not a big deal, but it, I'm just not always at that TV where I have all that. Kind of like Clint said, maybe my maybe my laziness. I'm like, oh, fuck that. I don't want to run downstairs and get it and put it in the DVD. Oh, it's too much. Well, phys <laughs> physical or digital, 
don't forget if anybody's interested, you guys too. I mean, um, in 2014, they did the uh, You're Invited, the Making of Night of the Demons documentary, which was really, it was a fantastic, interesting watch. And then I haven't seen this, but I discovered that in 2019, they did The Party's Just Begun, The Legacy of Night of the Demons, which is an, another documentary that covers all three original films and the 2009 remake. So you can get some more in-depth mm. Night of the Demons, learn more than I know about this movie, and then yeah, tell I, me about it. I would have never guessed that that would have had like a making of type thing. You think that would save it for the bigger things. But I guess I have Return of the Living Dead, the documentary DVD called More Brains. Yeah, I'm going to have to look into that because I would love to see a lot more behind the scenes and making of of a lot of these great 80, 80s movies. Well, and I think one of the reasons that when you see documentaries come out about making making of of certain films, regardless of if I like this movie or not, and I could sit here for an hour and a half and, and list all their, all their credits, but almost every actor in this movie went on to do other things. And I mean, in the entertainment world, big things, big movies, um, NCIS, Dallas, a lot of hit 80s TV shows and so on and so on. That always kind of opens the door for a making of, you know, when people from the movie have went on to do other things. Or, I mean, that's kind of a push that we've gotten over the last couple of years with physical media is they're always looking to add more to it so that people will buy the next edition of, well, why would I buy the Blu-ray when I have the DVD? Why am I going to buy the 4K when I have the Blu-ray? Like, we're getting a lot of that stuff. Which is, I mean, some people eat it up. I have a hard time getting into the special features a lot. I still buy the stuff. I just don't get into it. But some people love taking that deep dive and putting on the commentary track or watching the special features, you know, old commercials. See, and that builds interest, too, and it kind of gets the pot boiling again. Jason's going, we're never going to quit talking about mm -hmm. this fucking movie, man. Because there's also rumored that Kevin Tenney, who directed the original, and Adam, I can't pronounce his last name, Giersch, Giersch who directed the remake, they're getting get together to co-direct a sequel to the remake called Night of the Demons After Party. And you got to wonder if that's because there was all this, okay, the revenue was generated from all of these behind the scenes. And like, God, there's still some money to be made here. There's a story to be told. Let's, let's run with it. Well, thank you, everybody, for choosing this movie. Thank you very much. Yeah, we we had quite a few votes for this movie. I mean, we'll go back around and uh maybe put the three that were left out or not voted for in our you know upcoming uh, choices. See what we find out. See what people like. But this had a lot of buzz, and a lot of people wanted us to cover this movie. If there's a lot of people wanting us to cover it, it is it be loved like Clint loves it. Other people seem to love it and want to hear what we have to say about it. So more people have. Bad choices like Clint. I was I was gonna fire back some Halloween stuff, you know, and I thought, no, no, that's cool because not <laughs> of course, yeah. not every not yeah. everybody likes the same thing, and it, and that's that's why I stopped myself because it takes all of us to make this genre. You know what I mean? Clint's trying I to be a better your person. Yeah. <laughs> Until tomorrow, when he sends me some fucking meme. Tomorrow, <laughs> I was thinking in about twenty minutes. <laughs> right, right, right. As I'm settling down to bed, like. I'm interested to see uh, see what the audience chooses from the next four choices we put up. I can't tell you what it is because it would ruin the surprise and, and kind of the joke, but pay attention. Check out all the socials. You can get I Like It Spooky on Facebook. I Like It Spooky is on Instagram. I Like It Spooky is on Twitter. And isn't that underscore? I Like It underscore Spooky on Twitter. I Like It underscore Spooky. Of course, you can get all of us on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. And all of us and all, all the socials, we're all there. So pay attention, reach out with some more questions. Maybe this time, not about our butthole, but hey, it was still a still a lot of fun to answer that one. We'll we'll get the next choice of movie up here for the next episode, and uh, I'm, I'm interested to see what you guys think. You guys get to help us pick. Jason, you got anything coming up soon? No, no, nothing for me. Uh, not at least for the next couple of weeks. Uh, just gonna kind of stay home, watch some scary movies. Try to save my money, but I'm sure it's not going to work. I'll I'll not be buying something. Anything, anything that you got your eyes on that's coming out soon? Anything in the future? Oh, like like merchandise wise? Yeah, anything you're looking forward to? There might be some Night of the Demon toys coming out. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> I honestly would buy some of those. I'm kind of jealous of Clint. They're pretty badass. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and see, I. 
I knew when those came out, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool, but you know, that movie's like not really my thing, so I don't don't care about it as mm-hmm. much. And now I'm really like kicking myself whenever Scream Factory puts out anything. It's usually pretty popular. So I wish I would have gotten like the Night of the Creeps Tom Atkins figure, like the cop. Yep, I got him up on the wall. I did get the They Live uh, Frank. Uh, see, I don't have Frank. So, and I got the Miner from My Bloody Valentine. So, I, yeah, I hope they keep doing the crossover. So, I'm sure they will. Nope, nothing else really for me. You got anything coming up, Quinn? I'm just recouping, man. Um, I just got done with Midwest Monster Fest halfway to Halloween. I just got done with uh, a one-day pop-up event halfway to Halloween here in Michigan. Uh, so, I've got about three weeks till the next event. and now I got a little bit of time to restock the t-shirts and candles and stuff. And um, I got to shift gears and refocus back on my micro, my summer micro short Cletus goes to the movies and put a little bit more time in the pre-production of that. So hopefully sometime in August, I'm hoping August after uh, flashback that I can uh, get all the principal photography on that done, get it edited in time for the next one. Cletus meets the critics. So, yeah, kind of a recoup time, but not really. Cletus meets the critics. That sounds like it'll be a good time. Hopefully we can, uh, Jason and I can check that out. I was just going to say, I'll give you guys some front row seats. Oh, sounds good. Yeah, thanks. Sweet, sweet. That's one of the perks of uh, you being on the podcast. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. But it's like when you go to see Gallagher, the comedian, so you got to wear like a plastic sheet over you. You're going to get splattered <laughs> with blood. Yeah, I'm kind of like uh, you, Clint, recouping from uh, the I Like a Spooky Summer of 22. Uh, convention tour you know we just finished midwest monster fest we got something coming up uh in a couple weeks we're going to be all together at a convention we got flashback coming up we're kind of hitting some spots even though we live what nine hours away from each other we're kind of hitting some spots together and getting to hang out some and that'd be nice then maybe you hang out with us and you won't like us so We'll have to find somebody else to come on the podcast. Now you sound like my old like these guys suck. Now you sound like my old lady. She's like, Am I gonna like these guys? I go, Yeah, sure. Of course. Yeah. Uh, I'll just I'll just hit her with the John Deere tractor commercial. <laughs> I forgot all about that already. Oh, that was cool. hilarious. <laughs> hey y'all, welcome to the I Like a Spooky Podcast. This week's episode is sponsored by John Deere. Nothing runs like a deer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that's the end of this episode, huh? Everybody at once says, get me the fuck off the show. Yeah, check us out on our socials and wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. You can find I Like It Spooky. We'll be starting that YouTube channel hopefully soon, so check that out. And we will see you guys on the next episode of the I Like It Spooky (laughs) podcast. Hey, what's wrong with you, man? Show some fucking respect for the dead, will you?